Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome to another episode of Basic Nigerian History. Now, last episode, we discussed Abacha's reign of terror over the nation of Nigeria, how he and his cronies continued the corruption of Nigeria, plunged the valley of the Naira down greatly, and carried out all sorts of human rights abuses, all the while killing and silencing any opposition. This episode, we will discuss Nigeria's attempts to transition back to democracy. So we ended the previous episode when Abacha died of a mysterious heart attack and power was handed over to General Abdul Salami Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr's PRC, the Military Provisional Ruling Council, quickly dissolved the five fake parties that Abacha had created, pardoned the remaining prisoners accused of coup plotting and released almost all civilians, including Ambassador. And most importantly of all, they put the country back on a hasty course to democratic transition. On August of 1998, Abu Bakr appointed the INEC, Independent National Electoral Commission, to conduct elections for all the positions. So the local government's positions, the state's legislators, the governors, the National Assembly, and of course the president. Nine parties were granted provisional registration. Three of them met the criteria to contest for the main election. The parties were PDP, the People Democratic Party, it was the most national party containing powerful Eastern and Northern politicians like Yadua and his protege Atiku Abubakar. There was APP, All People's Party. These guys seemed to be supporters and allies of the Abacha regime. And then AD, which was Alliance for Democracy. It was formed of mainly the Yoruba Southwest. Obasanjo was the PDP's candidate. Olufalei was the candidate of AD and APP. The two parties joined together to defeat Obasanjo as they saw an opening in the fact that it wasn't too popular amongst the Yoruba people. On the 9th of January 1999, elections for the state assembly and governorships were held and PDP emerged victorious. On the 20th of February 1999, the National Assembly elections were held and once again PDP won outright. Then on the 27th of February 1999, Obasanjo won the presidency easily, taking 62% of the vote. The elections were peaceful but marred by accusations of malpractice from all sides. Both sides were involved in vote rigging and the usual corruption antics, but the country was eager to put the period of abusive military rule behind them, so we just let it slide. In the same year of 1999, an investigation into Abacha's regime finances showed an astounding, staggering, dumbfounding level of corruption, even for Nigerian standards. Like honestly, this corruption was next level, guys. Abacha and his family had embezzled $3 billion worth of Nigeria's money. Let us think in for a minute, because I know we regularly mention millions when we're talking about corruption, but this was billions. And it wasn't Naira, we are talking dollars here, US dollars. And that was just Abacha and his family. Now, let's not talk about his governors who were just as bad as him. One of them had 37 properties in which, after being thoroughly searched, turned up millions of dollars in various currencies, just sitting around in empty properties. Honestly, the level of corruption and stealing that happened at that point had never been seen before. The Nigerian government began negotiating with European banks to return the stolen money and started using much of it to pay off its incredibly high foreign debt. Can you imagine? These so-called leaders were very aware that the country was in huge debt, but they were still more than happy to just keep stealing billions of dollars. Even getting that money back from European banks wasn't easy. I know I breezed over it, but you think the European banks care that it was stolen? No, they do not care one bit. If you want this money back, you have to give us something. Deals had to be struck to get the money that they did find back. Deals that I am sure were not favorable at all for Nigeria. There was a decree in place that suspended the 1979 constitution and the 1989 constitution had not been implemented because of Abangida's refusal to let go of power. So for years, there had been no order in Nigeria's judiciary system, which would obviously fuel more corruption. I mean, if you know that no lawyer or judge would hold you accountable if you broke the law, why follow the law? Why not be corrupt? And neither Abacha nor Abubakar attempted to solve this. Abu Bakr's Provisional Ruling Council did manage to put a new constitution in place before Obasanjo ran for president and won. It was largely based on the 1979 constitution. However, corruption and lack of resources continued to plague the judicial system. On the 29th of May 1999, the inauguration of Obasanjo ended 16 years of consecutive military rule since Buravi overthrew Shagari. Atiku Abu Bakr was his vice president. Obasanjo became famous for it 
returning the country to civilian rule and for standing up to Abacha. Nigeria was economically stuck. Our democratic institutions like rule of law and so on were riddled with corruption and what's in the way. The bureaucracy was dysfunctional. Most of the infrastructure were either already collapsed or collapsing. And we had a military that wanted a reward for returning quietly to the barracks. If the country wasn't at work bottom yet, it was certainly very close to it. And Obasanjo was the man that the country had picked to fix these issues. Let's see how it did, shall we? It started by removing hundreds of military officers from political positions and attempted to recover more stolen money from overseas accounts. He released the remaining people held without charge, retracted questionable licenses and contracts left by previous leaders and established a panel to investigate human rights violations. Obasanjo also bravely declared the ending of corruption as one of the main goals of his administration. But as we will see, that didn't happen. Also in 1999, Obasanjo set up the EF FCC, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, to investigate corruption and had the Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Act passed. A number of high-ranking politicians were accused of major corruption scandals for personal gain. At the same time, ethnic tension was running high throughout the country, particularly between the Yoruba and Aousa over what Ibrahim Rabangida did to Abiola. Remember, back in a previous episode when IBB took power, eventually allowed an election which Abiola won fair and square, but then Babangida abruptly changed his mind and decided to keep being a dictator, which then led to the whole Abacha thing and ended up with Abiola dying in prison. Well, that had not been forgotten. Other ethnic issues include the violence in Kaduna over succession of an emir which led to over a hundred deaths in May of 1999. In November 1999, the army destroyed the town of Odi in Bailesa State and killed scores of civilians in retaliation for the murder of 12 policemen by a local gang. From February to May of the year 2000 in Kaduna, over a thousand people died in rioting over the introduction of Sharia law to the state and hundreds of Aousa people were killed in southeastern Nigeria. Also, remember that the Middle Belt only agreed to join the North when Sharia law was off the table. Now though, the 12 states of the North were implementing Sharia and going back on their word. Another ethnic tension issue brewing was the founding of Masop, which was the movement for actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra. The movement called for the reassertion of the failed state of Biafra. However, that was quickly and decisively crushed, with the leader, Ralph Uwa, you guys can pronounce the second name, being arrested in 2001 and charged with treason. These ethnic tensions inevitably bled into religious tension and conflict. In September of 2001, in Jos, over 2,000 people were killed in inter-religious rioting. In October of 2001, hundreds were killed and thousands displayed in communal violence that spread across the states of Benue, Taraba, and Nasarawa. As you can see, it already wasn't looking good for the beginning of Obasanjo's reign. And let's leave it there for now. We are going to continue this in the next episode. As usual, guys, the bibliography and the descriptions below. Don't forget to like share subscribe if you're watching this and you're not subscribed please subscribe because it helps us and builds what we're building here also don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you're alerted when we release the next episode and if you're not aware we have a new platform edutainment streaming platform just for African edutainment content. We are trying to take charge of our own story and we'd really appreciate it if you guys went over there, checked it out, see if you wanted to subscribe. Because as you're subscribing, you're supporting us to make even more content. Thank you very much. That's quite a lot.